Is it 1015? Let's get going. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to um, what, of course, we feel is one of the most important things that uh, we're going to be talking about this, this uh, summit, which is the students. Um, as always, we, we spent some time looking at legal things this morning. This is going to be a lot more fun. Um, sorry, Alex, and those of you that presented. Um, so uh, how the format's going to work today is, is we have a nine, uh, eight or nine students, depending on what time it is, um, that are going to be talking with us, uh, giving us some information about their perspective on what we do every day. Um, and uh, we have been trying as best we can to, in this COVID world to get that information out. We at, at uh, SUNY Degrees at Scale um, have a um, website that we keep up to date all the time uh, called Why We Do What We Do. Um, and it's all about the students, right? It's all about the stories we have about them. And so just as a, a brief, um, introduction to this 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 uh this time um many of you know uh online students tend to be what i call the invisible student um the invisible student is is people that aren't uh aren't on the line they're not at standing at the bursar's office complaining they're not the people that are doing this these are the people that are working at two o'clock in the morning at home um uh the um the program um uh the problem is, is that um many administrators and many colleges just assume those students are here and so in an effort to constantly get the students in front of you um we put this program together um and to talk a little bit about um um something about those invisible students um there is a uh, as, as all of us know the community practice model that we have has three presences in it um there is one other presence um that is not usually talked about in that model because we're usually talking about instructional design and that's something called emotional presence um, students' uh, energy in this, and, and as much as Michelle Ford hates me using the word synergy, that happens between a face-to-face -face faculty member and a um, a student in a classroom uh, is is painfully distant sometimes. Well, it's not just distant in the classroom; it's distant in their participation in activities on campus. It's distant in, in all of those elements that make a college experience a college experience. And so, um, you know, this is another reason we want to bring the students to the forefront. So, the format today, I'm going to skip all the talking now because you're not here to hear me. You've heard me enough. Um, uh, is uh, Amanda, who is our coordinator at Monroe Community College um has assembled this panel for us um and i'm going to kind of oversee uh, the overall flow of things today but she's going to be kind of our interviewer and facilitator um uh um sorry michelle um uh and talk about the things um that the students care about the most um and and what we're going to do is we're going to start off we're going to hear each student's story right everybody's got a story everybody's got their why they're here right why we do what we do but why we're here um is uh why they're here and how they got to be where they are today it's going to be a brief brief little conversation with the students Amanda facilitate that then we have a few questions we'll, we'll talk through with the students and then we'll open it up to your conversation because really asking your questions is what we want to get to so Amanda without further ado I'm going to turn off my microphone even which will make everybody happy and I'm going to let you take over Awesome. Well, I will facilitate the students kind of introducing themselves um, and getting started today. It is important to note that these students were nominated by their coach, um, that they were strong students, they've asked good questions, they may have had some struggles, but can help us learn from those. Um, and so I will first start with Heidi, if Heidi would like to unmute and tell us um, your name, why well, I said that, um, your prefer preferred pronouns, um, what campus you're attending and degree you're seeking, and then that kind of quick story that you have for us. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Heidi. Um, I am a student at Alfred State College studying healthcare management. Um, on track to be done in October of this year. Yay! Um, and my quick story is that I attended Hudson Valley many years ago, got an associate's degree, jumped into work, raised a family, always wanted to go back to school, but just couldn't commit to the in-person classes and making sure I got there all the time, given you know the, the chaos and craziness of things popping up with the family all the time. So this is my opportunity finally to get my bachelor's degree and I'm so excited. Thank you, Heidi. Um, and we'll move on to Jeanette. Hello, my name is Jeanette Rochetti. I am a part-time 
online only student at SUNY Canton. I love SUNY Canton. Um, and <laughs> I um, am going to school because I'm kind of, you know, not happy with my job where it's at. I'm a medical biller during the day and a yoga teacher during the nights and the weekends. And so I'm a busy lady when it's not pandemic. But um, I wasn't overly happy with my job. And I found that to make a move, I'd been at my job for so long that I would have to take a pay cut. And living by myself in New York City, if you couldn't tell I'm from Queens, um, to come living by myself in New York City, I couldn't take a big pay cut. So I said, how am I going to move forward in my career without going backwards? So my decision was to get a bachelor's degree and SUNY Canton offered a program in healthcare management, which is my, which has been my field my entire life. Well, healthcare. And um, I'm really excited and happy. Um, I'm part-time, so I will graduate when I graduate. And I'm looking, <laughs> I am looking forward to that. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, and that's so true, right? We all have our own pathway, our own journey, our own timeline. And so attending full-time, part-time, one class at a time, um, we're, as the coaching team, we are supporting students kind of throughout all of that. Um, next, we have Nicole. Hello, my name is Nicole Officer. I live in Stony Point, New York, which is Southern New York, Rockland County. And this is my first full semester back at school after 30 years um, to finish my degree. And actually I changed it from history to business management because that's what my career has been. I've toyed with coming back to SUNY to school um, at SUNY for a few years, um, specifically online because my job schedule was so crazy and random. I didn't, I couldn't commit to going to any classes in, in person. So I thought online would be the best scenario for me. Um, fast forward to March with COVID, uh, the company I worked for for 21 years, we were closed due to the um, pandemic. And then this fall, our company was closed down. Um, so over the summer, I said, I, now is the time because I don't have a job. I'm not going to get a job. I have a very generous severance. So I said, why not? So here I am. Um, my second semester, I made the dean's list. I cried because <laughs> I was not a good student like that. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I might be an invisible student here, but I was not in a previous life. So I, I'm making up for it now. And I'm very thankful for this type of program for people like me because it was a struggle initially. I like order and I didn't feel like I had any order here. So I color code everything on a calendar and that's the only thing that keeps me on target, uh, submitting my assignments on time and, and, you know, realizing what I can do with my time in the future based on what my uh, course load is for that week. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole. I think um, after we do those introductions, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the order and kind of how you found order or what might help with order. So um, sure. be prepared. I'm going to circle back to that. Okay. <laughs> so next we have Ernessa. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ernessa. I am going for my associates at Monroe um, for psychology. Um, I went to college initially right after high school, but um, couldn't figure out what to do. So, you know, I picked a major that just seemed like it could work and it didn't. So I dropped out because also just that whole, like, being in school in a building and then going home and having to do work, homework and then go, having a full-time job and everything else, it just became too much. And at that time there were no online degrees offered. So I just said, this isn't gonna work for me. And I always thought about circling back, um, but then I got married, I had kids, <laughs> everything else. Um, I moved to New York. I'm originally from Massachusetts. So everything just happened too fast. And then just like with everybody else, when the pandemic hit, it 
just got me thinking that if I could survive um, remote learning with my six-year-old, I could probably do it for myself. <laughs> so I started looking at online schools and um, Monroe came up and they offered psychology, which is great. That's something that I've always been interested in. And um, I took it from there and I was introduced to Kim Pacheco and she has made life so easy. <laughs> um, and I started off as a full-time student, but then again, upon speaking with Kim, just realized that with two little kids and a full-time job, it just wasn't gonna work. So um, just like um, Jeanette, I believe, who said, you know, she'll graduate when she'll graduate, that's gonna be me as well. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and I did throw in the chat, she uh, brought up Kim Pachico. She is one of our colleagues um, at SUNY um, and actually works um, with my team and the Empire team, but she is one of the success coaches that we'll dive deeper into that relationship and who that person is um, and how that person has um, helped our students throughout kind of their time with SUNY Online. Um, our next person to introduce themselves will be Mark. Uh, hey everybody, my name is Mark uh, West. I am from uh, Brooklyn uh, and my pronouns are he, him. I'm currently attending uh, Monroe Community College in the Bachelor or Business Administration program um, and will, I guess, eventually transfer on to Oswego to finish up uh, my degree plan. Um, and I guess what sparked or, you know, kind of what brought me to the SUNY online program, similar to a lot of other people, is kind of like the COVID pandemic. Um, you know, the, the job market, I got laid off and uh, you know, just felt like I needed to kind of, you know, create some security in, in like, you know, my next job and, and just kind of, uh, you know, level up, I guess you could say. So, um, you know, going to school was something that I had always kind of like toyed around with and, and would kind of like send out an email to some admissions advisor or something, but they never follow up. Um, but I think that the tenacity of the online success coaches um, for the SUNY online program, um, they kind of hooked me and they got me in um, and I'm extremely kind of, I'm you know, super grateful for, for it. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's been a really great uh, experience so far. Um, and I uh, really excited for this. Awesome, thanks Mark. Um, and definitely want to hear a little bit more about that admissions process and um, that piece that you kind of touched on. And you can see Kim Ross, your coach, is giving you a little hand clap. So happy to have both of you here. Um, our next um, introduction will come from Amy. Hi, um, I'm Amy. I am in my second semester of getting my psychology associates at MCC. Um, I was a mom, stay at home mom for a long time, um, kind of worked my way up from the very beginning in a brand new company and became the manager of operations. Um, and when that company closed its doors in February, 2020, I was left with the problem of trying to support my three children on my own as a single mom um, without a degree. And I couldn't, same thing somebody mentioned before, I couldn't really find a job making what I was making um, before. And um, when COVID hit, of course it made things more challenging. So I thought I would enter the workforce when my kids went back to school, um, but with three kids going hybrid at four different schools, it was just, it didn't make much sense. I didn't see how I could navigate that successfully. Um, and so I decided to finally pursue my dream of going back to school after 21 years. So um, psychology has always been uh, an interest of mine. Um, I have some personal reasons, you know, things that I've gone through in the past few years that make me really passionate about helping other people who um, may be going through things that I've gone through. And um, I'm just really excited. This has been a great opportunity. I'm, I'm really grateful for it. Thank you, Amy. Um, I think we had a lot of head nods with, you know, leveling up and going back to school and 
um, that kind of shift that's happened, you know, recently with the pandemic. Um, already feeling very inspired just hearing some of your stories. We haven't even gotten to the questions yet, and we still have more panelists. Um, I would like to have an introduction by Kevin next, please. No pressure. Um, <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so my name is Kevin Messam. I am originally from Toronto, Canada. Uh, I've been in the United States now for uh, 18 years. I became a citizen last year. Um, I am uh, at MCC. Um, I'm doing business administration. And uh, similar to Mark and Nicole, um, I've worked in the business field for over 16 years. I started off in the music business. Uh, I, I was in my uh, junior year of college. Um, I had an opportunity as a 20 something year old kid to move to New York City and start uh, my career touring the world with the likes of Justin Timberlake and whomever, all these, all, all these different people as a, as a part of the, and now Justin Timberlake is playing on my thing, sure. Uh, off, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, thank you. My wife turned that out. Uh, so yeah, I had this opportunity to, um, you know, jump into the record business, um, intern at this record company, work on all these different international marketing campaigns. And at any time I had to pick up my bag and go on the road with these artists. And as a 20 something year old kid from Toronto, Canada, that's a dream. So my brother's an attorney and I said, what do you think? He's like, are you crazy? Oh, school will always be there. So I picked up, moved to New York and uh, I always felt like, um, you know, I accomplished many different things, went to over 30 countries around the world, but there was that one thing that was missing and it just kept nagging me and nagging me, and nagging me. And again, similar to Mark and Nicole, um, uh, my last job uh, was a good job, but I just felt that I could do better. Um, didn't necessarily have the greatest leaders. And, uh, you know, my wife um, said to me, hey, there's a SUNY, SUNY online program. You should check it out. So sent an inquiry and this angel by the name of Kim Ross appeared, just bing, it just happened. And, um, she called me, we had a 90 minute call. And after that 90 minute call, I was sold. So here I am, uh, first semester, it's going really, really well. Um, I'm shooting for the Dean's list and I'm straight A's so far. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. That's um, wonderful to hear. And one thing that I heard that I think we'll circle back to is you have you have Kim Ross, who we love. Thank you. Um, but, we, but you also mentioned the support network that might be coming from home um, or work or other places. Um, and so I'd love to hear, um, you know, in the future, after we get through these introductions, kind of who else is on your team um, from our panelists. Um, our next introduction will be from Wilma. Oh, you're muted. I'm sorry, good morning. It's a pleasure to meet everybody. First, I just want to say, um, I know everybody talked about the angels at the end. I just want to start at the beginning. Amanda, amazing. I have to shout out to you. I don't want to cry. Whew. When I wanted to give up, she said, keep going. So thank you. Ah, I don't want to cry. But um, my name is Wilma. I live in Long Island. I am an HR director. I am a talk show host. I also started two organizations for women called Women Ignited Now, which is when beginning a new community development corporation. And the reason for that really quickly was because I am a sexual abuse survivor. So before the pandemic, I was traveling the world speaking. I was at conferences, asked to speak at prisons, universities, so forth. And then the pandemic happened. But before that, I had a major stroke. February 26th of this week will be one year and I survived. So I am so grateful that God bless me, he touched my body. I am doing phenomenal, I, I'm just grateful. I am on medication, but that's okay. Um, what sparked me to go back to school was because at 40, I went back to get my high school diploma. So I was excited about that because I was a teenage mom. I'm 55 now. And I always had this nudge in me, though I'm successful as a businesswoman, entrepreneur. Like I said, I'm a, a motivational speaker. 
but I was missing something. So I decided to go back and get my associate's degree with the business um, administration program. And I love it. But when I wanted to give up last year and Amanda said, no, you know, keep going. Let me see what I can do to help you. Amanda, I'm loving it. I am absolutely, and I'm doing great. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So it's a pleasure to meet everybody. Let's, let's just keep, you know, encouraging each other. Thank you for this time. Yes, thank you. Um, and I'd love to hear a little bit more about, um, well, I, I, I know it, but I think it'd be good for our attendees to hear about the struggle and what, what almost broke down because we have faculty, we have staff here, we have administrators here. So hearing some of those um, roadblocks um, once we get through our introductions is going to be really helpful um, when, we're design, when we're designing classes, when we're thinking about our instruction. So thank you so much. Um, and it's been a pleasure to work with you. And I know we're, we're on our way to that graduation. Um, and we have our final panelist, um, Layla. Hi, everyone. My name is Lila. I took some quick notes because I want to make sure I don't forget anything. So I'll start out um, by saying my name is Lila and I'm 27 years old. I'm from Long Island. I'm getting my MBA degree at Senia Suego, which I'm really, really, really excited about. And I'm so grateful to have finally started my journey. And I'm so grateful to SUNY Online for helping me in this journey um, because it was just so hard to even find like a good MBA program, especially 100% online MBA program. So I'm really, really grateful for SUNY Online to help guide me along the way, even before the application process, even through the journey. It's been so, so great to have their support. And my success coach is like beyond amazing, Susan Warner. I love her. She's like a cheerleader, a mentor, a best friend, counselor, like all in one. She's amazing. I love her. And my academic advisor, Suni Oswego, is really, really amazing. She was like my also like my number two best like support system throughout this whole process. Tara Magner, she's amazing. Um, she answered like all my 101 questions before I joined and even through my journey, if I've ever any questions, she's always so helpful. Um, so I also want to tell you a little bit about my background. Um, I graduated summa cum laude from SUNY Farmingdale. And um, I was actually like considering different colleges on Long Island, but to pursue my MBA. But then um, once the pandemic hit, I knew safety was like really, really important to me because I love being in class, like in person. I loved like being in the classroom experience. I love making friends. I love participating in class. I love like, you know, when teachers teach you, I don't, I'm not really a huge fan of self-learning, but um, I was just so grateful that SUNY Oswego offered a 100% MBA degree program because, because of the pandemic, I didn't want to catch COVID at school and bring that virus back home. That was a huge concern to me. Um, I also love, love, love the flexibility and convenience that the online program provides you because you're not wasting time commuting to school, commuting back, you know, you're not, you know, you don't have to spend three hours in classroom and then come back and do three hours of homework per class. So that just saves you a lot of time as far as I'm concerned. And for me in my life, I'm like so busy all the time. Like I'm juggling different goals, different responsibilities. I have personal goals, professional goals, family goals goals around the house. And then, so for me, I feel like the program, the 100% online MBA program allows me that work-life balance that I need in my life. And it gives me more time to just even have me time in my week. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, I also love that Sunny Oswego offered a highly ranking and highly accredited MBA program because it's hard to find a good online program in general. And the fact that SUNY State University of New York is offering you an online program, like it's just really beyond amazing because, you know, when you, when you enter the workforce, they're gonna take your degree seriously. It's not like some, any other online, you know, college or whatever that's out there. So that was important to me too, when I was choosing a program. And the best part of it, like we have, you know, like LIU Post and Hofstra are two amazing private colleges in Adelphi, three uh, amazing private colleges on Long Island, but their MBA program was like 45,000 and SUNY Oswego offered it like 20,000. That was like a no brainer. You know, I was like <laughs> half the tuition. And um, one of the other things I loved about Studio Oswego is that they offered me the opportunity to do my MBA program within one year as a full-time student. So that was also really important to me. Um, so I'm really glad that they've been so supportive of everything and all my goals. And um, I only have uh, six months to go before graduation. It's my second semester. I'm hopefully graduating in the summer. So I'm really excited about that. Um, getting my MBA was my dream since my first year of college. So just to be on this journey now, it's been really exciting and really, really self-empowering. Um, when I was younger, um, I really wanted to get my MBA right after I was done with my bachelor program, but then I had some health issues that held me back and set me back on my timeline. But just to be here now and 
be in this journey now. I mean, just not even having completed it yet, but just being in the journey has been so self-empowering. And I really encourage people to pursue all their goals, whatever uplifts them and motivates them, like do it because it's, it's worth it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and this group of students that we have here is a really beautiful cross-section of the programs that we're offering, the campuses that we're offering, um, and the degree levels. So um, I think we can start with um, a little bit on just kind of what is, what's one of the biggest resources um, that you're utilizing in your program? Um, and not everyone needs to answer, um, just if it kind of sparks you or if you want to put something in the chat, that's another great way to answer. Um, but we can kind of start there. Amanda, I'll jump in if nobody else is going to. Uh, two of the things, two of the resources that have been most helpful to me are the online library. That's like, you know, pretty much there all the time. <laughs> and then the other one is um, preview week. I find incredibly helpful um, to set me up for success for the rest of the, of the session. Awesome. And I think Nicole was going to answer as well. Okay, um, so for me, my online success coach, Olivia, I, I know she's here somewhere, I don't see her right here, um, has been very helpful because, you know, I didn't know what to expect when I decided in August to go back to school in September. So I, you know, she was very helpful in saying, do this, do this, do this. And I learned a lot, but I kind of panicked after the first month that I'm going, I'm missing my assignment. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I had, had really kind of had a meltdown. And, you know, I thought back to how I work in my career and I write everything down in a notebook. It's like my Bible. And when we were talking, I said, you know, I'm thinking about doing color coordination of my classes on a calendar. She starts laughing. She's like, that's the best way to do it that I've done. It's been very helpful for a lot of people because I'm a visual learner. So, you know, yes, I have an iPhone that I'm really trying to keep my appointments in my life in, but if I have a paper calendar, it's just so much easier for me to look to the future of what I need to do. Um, the other thing that's been very helpful, and it's really been this semester that I've been taking advantage of it, are the learnings on how to write a um, research question and, re and that, because I have not done a paper I mean, we didn't have computers when I was in college the last time. I'm only 51, but they weren't that popular. So I'm used to going to a library with a card catalog. This whole online experience has been has been very eye-opening for me, but the resources from the library have been wonderful. So if you haven't started using them, please do, because you're missing a lot of helpful knowledge. Nicole, when you say the resources at the library, is that, are you talking to a librarian? Are you usually like searching in the stacks or what, what is it? What do you mean by those resources? Well, they offered Dana, I don't know her last name. She gave a webinar on how to come up with a research question because that was my, that was the topic I had to come up with. And, I, you know, all of a sudden I blanked out, like, how do I come up with this question? I had no idea. I mean, I started to panic. So they offered the library, librarians, I think, offered these courses where you can learn how to come up with a question, how to research to come up with a question. And then once you come up with a question, how to narrow it down so it's specific to whatever your paper is. And that was so helpful for me. I mean, I watched that video because they've sent it to us every week. So I make sure I'm on track because I tend to overthink everything. So for me to come up with a question was like, what? I, you know, it's not that simple, but they made it very simple for somebody like me. So it was wonderful. And, and now I'm starting to use the library resources more. Like I said, I'm used to going to a library. So I'm just getting the hang of the software, but it, it's really been very helpful. And, and if you have any question, there's somebody there all the time. You just type it in, they get back to you. So it's really a resource. Kevin, did you unmute to say something? Yeah, I was going to say uh, definitely as a, as a resource, um, your professors, um, uh, Donna Burke, 
has been outstanding. She's like um, my, my first assignment that I did for her. We, we bonded immediately. She's from the town next to where I currently live. So we definitely had some commonality there, but overall she's just a great person, great professor. And uh, definitely, um, uh, you know, some, some of my, my mentors that are, you know, I've been speaking about going back to school and here I am and they're holding me accountable. So um, definitely uh, weekly check-ins and like, so how's it going? And I'm showing them an assignment. Okay, good, good. Just making sure that you're, you're on it. So definitely a balance between your professors and, and your mentors. Yeah, and I think Jeanette, you said something in the chat about professors. Can you elaborate on that piece? What is it um, that has helped you be successful with your professors? Yeah, my professors have been awesome so far. This is only my second semester, but my professors have been really great. And I'm, I'm kind of a squeaky wheel person. Like I, I will not hesitate to say, hey, I need help. And I was, my first semester, I was in like a complete state of panic because like Nicole was saying, I'm used to the Dewey Decimal System and all the old school library. And the last time that I took distance learning when I got my associate's degree, they handed me a stack of VHS tapes. So I was freaking out. I had no idea how to use Blackboard. I was like, oh my God, I was calling Amy, my, uh, my success coach, Amy, who is here and she is awesome. And I love her so much. And I was calling her freaking out. I was freaking out to my professors. I was all over the place. And I, I've been talked off the ledge so many times in the last two semesters. And they've just really been so amazing. Um, the online library pro programs like Nicole was talking about have been great, like to research anything. It's just, you go right in there and it's right there for you it's everything's been really helpful and everything is really great sorry <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at work right now so i apologize <laughs> not a problem and that's exactly it, right? it. that this program is it's not necessarily work life school balance it's work life school integration how can we do all the things that make you you um throughout throughout this program um, there was a question in the chat that was, um, I think, a great question. Thank you, Jeremy, from Monroe, about what do you wish you knew as you were starting the online learning that you know now? So maybe um, we have some, some, oh, go for it, Lila. Uh, I was going to mention my SUNY success coach, she gave me an, an amazing piece of advice, which was also mentioned in the SUNY online um, student success uh, workshop series. They talked about an analogy of like how you have glass balls and plastic balls and like we're always juggling like different tasks in our life and different balls. So they said like, she said that when you're looking at your to-do list, you're looking at your priorities, you're looking at your goals. Think If you're juggling different balls, like something's gonna drop. So think about what is a priority, a glass ball, and what's not a priority, a plastic ball. And maybe the plastic ball can drop and that's fine, but make sure the glass ball doesn't drop. And that basically the glass ball was your MBA homework. And you know, the in, in my example, my 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 chores was the the plastic ball that she was saying, like if it doesn't happen this week, it's okay. You can get to it next week. But the, you know, you want to make sure your assignments are in, in time and and you don't you're not late. And um the second greatest advice she gave me was um, to make sure you review your, your, your course schedule in advance. Like I was actually in the beginning of my first semester, I was taking everything week by week. So I would only look at what was due next week or this week, that's it. I wasn't like whatever's due this week, that's it. Nothing more than that. And then one month later, two months later, I was freaking out because suddenly um, the next month I got overwhelmed with so many midterms due at the same time. I got and then the month after that, I thought I would have a, like a month break before final started. But then my third month, I had like right after my midterm month, I had all these final papers and projects due. And I was freaking out at the same time. I was like, oh my God, I didn't expect that. Because in your bachelor's program, usually your, your midterms are in your second month. And then your fourth month is when all the finals happen. I thought I would have a break. I didn't really have much of a break in between. And my, my SUNY success coach told me like, this is going to be a different program. It's going to be a different schedule. And, you know, you need to like look at it more well in advance so that you you know you know what the expectations are you you can feel better and you know how to prepare better especially for those bigger projects you have to prepare like smaller you know goals at a time like take it step by step instead of overwhelming yourself last 
minute with all those big things do at once. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Was there- Hey, other... Nicole, can you, can you um, actually, I know you typed a really long uh, chat just then. Um, one thing we haven't talked about too much is some of those other supports. Um, uh, can you talk about this webinar series? Uh, the, the, uh, we don't talk about it too much actually up at SUNY, uh, how important those are. Um, it's kind of like an orientation that just keeps going, right? Yeah, so I didn't really think much about it in my fall semester. I don't know why. I, you know, going back to school after 30 years, what could be different? Everything was different. So as I started going in and, and panicking because I, I said, oh my God, I'm, you know, I, my assignments, I'm doing them the day before, I'm up till two in the morning, making sure I submitted on time. I mean, I was freaking out. So I looked at what was offered and then I just started taking the webinars because knowledge is power in education and in life. And if you don't know what you're doing, it's so easy to fall into that, you know, go in that rabbit hole of like, oh my God, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing. But if you take some of these webinars to learn how to do Blackboard, to learn how to do Moodle, like my course is last year on Moodle. I didn't take a Blackboard overview. Olivia, my, my success instructor gave me one because I said, I don't know how to use Blackboard. I kind of figured it out, but I, I wanted to know the little tricks. So she gave me a one-on-one -on -one for like 20 minutes. It was super easy, but they do, sorry about my dog. They do offer um, all sorts of resources online that you can take. A lot of them are recorded. So you can just, you know, keep rewatching them, whatever you need. Um, it's really beneficial because sometimes you just blank out and say, oh my God, how do I do that? I don't remember. And it's really helpful. Um, it's been helpful for me because I have to do APA siding and I, you know, <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. But now- One of the things that we that. really wanted to uh, emphasize in these webinars is that, um, and I think you're all hearing it here, is that you're not alone. No. You know, you're in a webinar with 15 other people that are having the exact same problems you are, right? And that's always helpful. And those webinar series has been such a great success. Um, love to see it. Sorry, Amanda, for jumping in. I know there's, um, so is there anybody else uh, who, I know Jeremy had a great question. I wish I knew now what I knew, what I, I wish I knew then what I know now. Question. Anybody else want to jump in on that? No, okay. So I wanted to say, I know I wrote it on oh, there as in. well, but I just, something I wanted to um, share was that um, not every class is going to give you the same experience. So this is my first semester. And as I said, I, prior to this, I never did any um, online courses. So I assumed, and my only sort of um, thing that I had to look at, my only example was, and it's funny to compare, but like my son's first grade class. And, you know, it involved a lot of like the teacher explaining the lesson. And I assumed it was going to be a little bit more along those lines where the professor would say, you know, this is what you have to read or this is what you have to do on your own, but then I'm also gonna give some type of a lecture for a whole understanding. And some of the professors um, do that, which is helpful because I am that person that also needs to sort of have her hand held um, through the whole thing. But then there are other professors that are just like, here's the assignment do it. Here are your questions. Here's what you have to hand in. Um, these are your readings and goodbye. <laughs> um, and those have been a little challenging. And I wish I knew that in the beginning so that maybe I could have prioritized it. Um, as I said, during the introduction, I had started off as a full-time student and I appreciated one of the professors. It was um, a statistic professor who in the intro had written like this is a class, this is what is ex expected of you. And in order for you to succeed, you need to have you know, 10 to 14 hours to dedicate to this class. And that's when I went back to Kim and I'm like, I do not have that kind of time on top of the other classes. So I appreciated a professor who said from the very beginning, like this is what you need to do to succeed. That way it gave me the opportunity to say like, okay, well, no, hold on. I can't handle that. I have to reevaluate and maybe do it at a different time. So I think um, just my advice for anyone starting out is, you know, 
be over prepared. There's nothing wrong with being overly prepared and having it easier than to go in it thinking like, okay, somebody's going to walk me through this. And then you realize that no, not some people are not going to walk you through it. So um, I do want to do a quick poll. Um, and, and since all of our uh, students have their videos on, we just use like a hand raise. Who was familiar with online learning? prior to starting their SUNY online program? Raise your hand. So one, um, and I know there are some coaches here too. Um, many of the students we're working with, online learning is a new modality for them. Um, it, is, it is something new. So I thought that was interesting that um, kind of sharing what your expectations were or what you thought might have been the case um, in relation to kind of living it and doing it now. Um, there was another question um, that I think we touched on in some of the intros, but um, something um, they're interested in hearing is what didn't work for you um, with online learning, um, and then how did how did how did things improve? So um, I'm going to call on Wilma first because she kind of touched on it um, from last semester to this semester. Um, and I think she can start us off with a good answer. Thank you, Amanda. Oh, wow. What didn't work for me was honestly believing in myself. That was the first thing. I had to do a self-evaluation or a self-audit. Um, I think I saw myself as I couldn't do it. I think I was like making excuses for myself, my age. Um, I'm so busy at work. And I think I had to come to the realization that I was being too hard on myself. I had to let myself off the hook. And when I came to that realization, and of course I talked with Amanda, we were able to work through it together. And your encouragement was so powerful for me because remember, I'm in a position where I, all I do is encourage. I encourage, I coach. I, I, I do a lot with women and girls. I said, no, you can make it. It's, it's gonna be okay. I found myself reversed where I needed it. And it was so interesting because it was a little hard to accept it. Like, no, wait a minute. I'm used to being an Amanda. <laughs> but um, that was really, really interesting for me going through it. So I had to really work that through. And of course, um, I think it was Nicole that mentioned, I think it was Nicole, preview week, trying to get through that and understanding the first semester I, I signed up for, I didn't even know there was a preview week, <laughs> Nicole. So when I went and I'm like, okay, I start where... I had, I really had a meltdown and Amanda was so gracious to help me work through it. And then this semester, Amanda helped me understand, let's pull back a little bit, let's reevaluate and then let's go forward. So that's what worked for me. Um, and one of the other things I was hoping you could talk about um, was just, there were, I think in your first semester, there was multiple um, platforms, right? So there was, Blackboard, and then I think it was VoiceThread that a professor was using. And this was, you know, as we raised our hands, this was a never had done online learning before. So um, could you talk a little bit about the experience of navigating Blackboard and then on top of that VoiceThread? Yes, um, VoiceThread to me was totally confusing. Not that I didn't have the knowledge in my mind to eventually get it, but it was just very confusing. Like I, I remember, I think I contacted you one time, I couldn't navigate how to really work it. And um, that was one of the professors, and I, and I think if I remember correctly, she explained it, but it just, I couldn't grab it. I don't know what it was. It was very confusing for me trying to, I had to post pictures. I don't know, I couldn't really get through it. I was very, I think maybe because I was still a little uncomfortable on the Blackboard side, I didn't realize there was so many different um, pieces to Blackboard, trying to understand, open your email every day. So I really did struggle with voice thread. And then it was another one, I can't remember, one of the professors, it was supposed to be up. I don't know if you remember this, Amanda, then it wasn't up. So someone navigating through a, some of the online platforms, that was a little difficult for me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I know I, I put you on the spot there, but um, I think that experience is really important. Um, and someone in the chat sh shared that you know, um, professors are having difficulty with the online platforms as well. Um, and they want to make your, your classes interactive and add some different pieces to it, um, but they're learning as well. So um, VoiceThread is an opportunity to um, 
change up the discussion, but it can still be a little challenging, especially if it's the first semester. Um, other participants who um, something that may have not gone as well and then kind of how we overcame that. Personally, I'm not a big fan of group projects. I find it really stressful. Um, it's really hard, especially in an online program. Um, another thing I found really difficult with my MBA program was, um, you know, in, in your bachelor's, it's so, you know, it's, it's a very different kind of assignments that you're responsible for. The depth, type of research and reading and writing level is, is so much more different and you get so accustomed to it within the four years. And I think it's like a culture shock, you know, in your freshman year of, of college, like what to expect as a college student, but then second, third and fourth year, it's so much easier, you know, as, as when you're going through the, like you get, you get used to what the professors are expecting, the type of assignments. But when you get to the graduate level, it's like a whole different ball game. And I wish that there was like some sort of writing orientation or writing workshop because I did not know what to expect as a graduate student that this is what kind of reading and writing and research level analysis my professors are expecting. And I just, I didn't like that it was a trial and error process. Like I had to go through research papers, case studies, get my grades and then find out what I did wrong. I kind of wish from the very beginning I had some sort of writing class or workshop or um, some sort of exposure to this is what graduate level writing looks like and this is what's going to be expected of you. This is what you need to, to get close to to get that A because getting that A was really important to me. But um, group projects in particular was really hard because there was times we had to do case studies and I still have other case studies where I'm working with other people. Everyone has a different level of reading and writing analysis and to write one paper and everyone's being graded the same. That was really stressful, um, just in general. And, and everyone had such busy schedules. I mean, some people were mothers, they had children, some people had full-time jobs, some people had really, really hard jobs. Like one of my um, classmates is a doctor, another one's a physician assistant, one of them's an accountant. And I, I can't even imagine what their schedule looks like. And it's like, it's hard to just schedule a meeting. It's hard for everyone to speak up during a Zoom meeting. It's it's so confusing and it's, it's stressful, but I mean, I'm so grateful for the opportunity and I guess because of the pandemic and just online learning, I mean, it has its pros and cons. And I guess it's just a matter of um, just finding the, how to work with it, you know, and just finding those strategies and techniques and that's important. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there was a question that was a little bit up at the top, but I think you kind of touched on it. Um, for academic writing and our, um, you know, bigger assignments, our students um, that are here with us today, are you guys utilizing a writing center either on your campus or within Thinking Storm? Is that a piece that you're using? If you are, how is that experience? No, so I'm hearing crickets or my dog barking, I'm not sure. Um, so it seems that the writing center isn't something that we are currently using. Um, and I think every SUNY online coach in, that's in this session right now is taking a little note on um, what we'll be reminding our students to utilize um, because it is, it is a great resource. Um, and there's opportunities at your campus probably for on campus and um, with Thinking Storm, which is in the SUNY online Blackboard. Um, let me see what next question is. Was there anyone who had something, a lasting thought on that piece that wanted to share while I pull up another question? I just had one thing I want to add. I wish the professors added videos in their modules because I had two professors that did that where every module there was like a really, really great video link regarding the module. And usually they pulled like really good videos from, from YouTube. And that, like, I learned so much from a five, 10 minute video clip than I did reading 30 pages of, of a textbook or 10 pages of a case study. You know, it's, it's crazy because um, I don't feel like I have the same attention span that I did when I was a high school student, when I could, I could learn for 45 minutes and keep my attention on 45 minutes, where now I feel like my attention, like, it's like 15 minute chunks. Like I could do, I could learn for 15 minutes and then I need to take like a five minute break, then get back to, for, and, you know, start step two. But it's just, it's just crazy to me because, um, I just feel like the videos are so helpful. And I was surprised that not all professors use that strategy. Like I was kind of disappointed with that because I feel like, especially as an online student, um, you know, we don't have that visual support where the teacher's teaching you in front of a chalkboard, you can ask questions, you can, you know. So I just felt like videos are so helpful and they, they give you all the visual and the learning. And I don't know, I love the videos. I wish, I wish all the professors use videos like every module to kind of show students what, what you know, how to learn better. That, that 
Thank you. And I can see the chat from our panelists that are echoing that exact um, notion of we are really enjoying those videos um, in a couple, you know, MCC professor Britain um, is getting a, a shout out there. So um, I see a question that um, comes, oh, I think that's a question more for us, but so students are directed to reach out to writing centers on their own campus, yes. Um, that is an option. Um, they are fully students on the campus. Um, so we connect as, as coaches, we connect them with their campus resources. Um, but we also have thinking storm. Um, and so sometimes our campus resources, um, and maybe our, our team can talk about this, um, have more traditional time periods that can help you with certain things that are needed to done financial aid, student accounts, um, the uh, registrar's office, you know, they have a nine to five kind of opportunity. Um, I see Jeanette written, shaking her head. Um, whereas Thinking Storm is um, accessible 24-7. Um, so they can submit papers through that. Um, and so that sometimes the, our, our tutoring resources are um, shared through Thinking Storm because they have larger accessibility um, opportunities. Was there anyone who wanted to speak on campus? Um, connections and, and timelines. It's really going to be helpful yeah, on I'm this. Worried. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeanette. Yeah, I have a full time nine to five job. So like even right now, there could be calls coming in from work and stuff like that. And like taking care of kind of campusy stuff like, you know, registration, things like that you know, it's nine to five. And even like meetings, like, you know, they show like, hey, we're having a Zoom thing on how to do this, or hey, we're having a meeting on how to do that. And it's like, okay, then I have to go back and watch. It's at 10 o'clock in the morning. So I have to go back if I want to watch a recording and then I can't ask a question. So I would, that's something that I would um, appreciate a little bit. Um, more live stuff in the evening that we could interact with if we have like full-time jobs. Thank you. Um, with me, the interactions help as well, but with me, it's also just helpful kind of what Lila touched based on just having a video from a professor, even if it's not them talking, just a video they pull from YouTube that's about the lesson. So I have um, like my, one of my um, psychology professors, he does a recap on the module of just like touches bases on a few of the important things that we read from the book that, you know, he assigns like the chapters that he assigns. And for me, that's great because when he's explaining it, I'm like, okay, that's how I understood when I was reading it. So like, I understand what that chapter was about. Whereas my, one of my other classes, it's just read this chapter, here are the questions, um, this is what you have to answer. And I'm struggling with, with answering a lot of these questions because I don't have anything to sort of base, okay, well, this is how I understood it when I read this, but clearly like I'm not answering the questions the right way. So that must mean there's a disconnect between what I'm understanding and what the professor wants from the readings. So uh, a video of just a, like a quick recap of that lesson or even just a YouTube video of somebody else explaining um, part of that module would, would be helpful because like most people touched up on, we don't have one-on-one -on -one interactions. So it's difficult as a student to know, well, am I understanding this until you submit the assignment and then you get the response that like you didn't do well. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just something like that. I, I don't know if that's just something that could be done. And I understand that professors as well, this is new to them and it's not, um, easy the whole digital age but um that's just my two cents on the whole online thing ernice i think you're you're making some great points in the whole video uh inserting video into your courses and all the other technologies that exist you know it's becomes a lot easier and the, a lot of the people that are on this call though are the people that have to facilitate that 
Um, you saw Teresa jumped in, uh, the faculty, um, but it's really important for them to hear you say this, right? Because this is the stuff that makes it real for you. Um, and tomorrow, um, you know, we're all taking notes and, and listening very carefully because tomorrow we have a, another one of these sessions um, with the coaches uh, talking to faculty. So if there's any faculty folks here, uh, make sure you're on because this is the stuff we're hearing every day. Um, this is the stuff this team hears every single day as far as what, what can we do uh, to make this more uh, us less invisible, <laughs> you know, our, our students less invisible and help us learn. Um, so great observations, guys. That's that's fantastic. Um, and so, but for the faculty and people that are on here, please make sure you tune in tomorrow afternoon when we have this another session very similar to this one um, from the coach's standpoint. So, um, okay, Amanda, back to you. Sorry, I just jumped in. Great. No, it, that's great. Um, I, there's some some bubbling up in in the chat of um, connecting with your professors. Um, so how how are you? connecting with your professors. Um, if you're not connecting with your professors, what's prohibiting that? Um, what could be helpful? So I think Kevin is ready. He is unmuted. Yeah, I definitely think um, um, connecting with your professors is, is one of the keys for you to be successful. Um, and I, I, I kind of learned that from my professional life that, you know, the approach to, you know, your education should be treated like a job. Like it's your career. So if you uh, are on a team of eight and you're reporting into somebody and you understand what what the expectations are, but you're not clear about you know submitting a report by Friday, you should ask, what does this look like? What are the what are the details behind this? Um, just asking specifics because that professor is there to help navigate you towards being successful. But if you don't ask those questions, you're not going to know anything. So I, for me personally, I use a professor as a tool. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so I think I'm seeing, so there are sometimes professors who have Zoom or office hours. Um, so like with their phone numbers, are, are these resources that you're using? Are they accessible to you? Um, can, can any of our panelists speak on going to an office hour maybe? Hi. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I've used office hours a couple times. Um, they are really helpful for me. One of the biggest challenges about online learning is that you don't have that personal face-to-face -face connection, especially um, when preparing for a test. I don't I'm not in a classroom picking up those nonverbal cues like, oh, that's what I need to focus on. Oh, that's definitely going to be on the test. So that is where office hours are most helpful to me um, or even email exchanges back and forth. What's not helpful for me is when a professor answers those questions very vaguely, like, well, everything is going to be important. Every sentence in the book is important. Um, so that's just kind of a, you know, I, when I'm asking for some feedback and some specific that is really helpful. The other thing that I find most helpful, and I think somebody else mentioned it, is when assignments are graded and there's useful feedback in a timely manner. So if we're doing discussion boards, um, it's not super helpful to get the feedback that you did your 200 words and you responded to two people, great job. What's helpful is just like if we were in a face-to-face -face classroom, that was a great comment. Oh, you were a little off on that comment. Those kind of things are most helpful from the professors. And that's when I feel like I have the most connection with them. Thank you, Heidi. Was there anyone else who wanted to speak on the Zoom office hours um, connecting with professors? Nicole, can you tell, oh, sorry, Jeanette's had her hand up. <laughs> Hi, yeah, my, one of my teachers last semester had office hours um, that she would sit in this, she would open up a Zoom room for an hour and just sit there. And if anybody had any questions, we were able to go and ask her the question. And I, I appreciated that. And I really like to be able to see what my teacher looked like because that was when I was able to see her and ask her any kind of questions that I needed. 
And also I am like emailing my teachers, forget about it all the time. I said in the chat, they're probably like, oh God, not her again. But, um, <laughs> but you know, I've had really great interactions with all of my professors and they've really been great. And if we, you know, if we don't get the feedback we want, you know, like I'm the kind of person that'll be like, okay, you gave me this grade. What was it about it that didn't get me a hundred? You know, and what is it that you need different? And sometimes it's just a matter of asking and, you know, hopefully you get what, you know, you get what you need. I think Nicole put um, some something in the chat that I think could be helpful to hear. So last semester, now mind you, is my first semester back to school and online learning and losing my job. So I was a little crazy. But I had a professor and I agree with your comment, Lila, on the group assignments. You know, I felt like not everybody participated like I did. And it was very frustrating. Um, you know, I don't want to always be the first person to post or or do all the work. And I, I did a lot of the work, and it was a legal class, which, you know, was my worst nightmare. But um, you know, there was a, a an error on the syllabus, and I reached out to the professor a few times. I even left a message on his voicemail. I mean, saying I don't know what to do here because this says one thing, but and this says another thing, and I don't wanna not get a good grade because of an error, but I don't wanna do hours of work for no reason. And I didn't hear back from the professor. And then the following Tuesday, he's like, oh, there was an error, so we're not even gonna do this module. And that was frustrating because, you know, I'm trying to do the best I can. And the fact that it was a legal class, I mean, I just, just you know, slipped my throat now, boring. No offense to any legal, anybody but i just it's hard for me to understand all that jargon and that was frustrating to me because i i didn't want to be i didn't want to get a bad grade for something that wasn't my fault that i tried to reach out and i would have happily have done the assignment if he just would have said no no go ahead it's okay but i didn't hear anything back and i and i know professors are busy and i understand they have a life and everything um but i was just a little surprised by that yeah, thank you. Um, I We touched a little bit on um, extra kind of technology that is being used, but we didn't touch specifically on Packback. I know that Packback has been used at MCC um, and I've talked to some students about that, but what is your experience um, across SUNY Online, the students who are here, um, your experience with Packback? Go for it, Amy. Um, I personally loved Packback. Um, I used it last semester for my ethics class. And uh, my first semester back in school had never done online learning. I was, you know, we had email when I was in college briefly, you know, 20 something years ago, and that was about it. Um, and I, most of my professors were kind of hands off, I would say last semester, which was fine as long as it's organized and I know what to expect. Um, but in ethics, we used Packback and my professor was able to be a lot more involved in the conversations with us, which I loved. He was asking us questions. He was responding to our questions. Um, I like that they can like spark things that you say. So like if they like something you say, they'll like, they'll spark it so you know that was really good that was really interesting or they'll he would um I can't remember what they call it but like basically like highlight it say that this was a really great comment um for the week um and it just felt more like an an authentic discussion than the other discussion discussion forums that I was a part of um it felt like there was more back and forth and uh and it was just fun I found it a little bit more user friendly I liked the little avatars you know I like for it. those of you that don't, uh, there's been some questions in chat about what is Packback. Um, for those of you that don't know, it is a, um, basically it's an AI um, artificial intelligence tool that we are piloting right now inside of SUNY Online. Um, uh, it's, and it really is a discussion enhancement tool, basically. I think it's the best way to say it. 
Um, it kind of gives students feedback on the, the quality of their postings and the things that, you know, if a student says, uh, I agree, they're going to let, let them know that that's not probably a good answer. Um, and they should develop it more. And so it's an artificial intelligence tool that we're piloting. We're doing a lot of research on. Um, and, uh, you know, at CIT, you can see some of that research. Uh, another plug for CIT, shameless plug. Um, uh, to see the research that, uh, that Kristen and her team are, are doing on the Packback um, and, and the, the SUNY Online uh, Degrees of Scale project is actually piloting that right now. Other campuses have the opportunity to use it. And I think um, if you want any more information on it, you can ask Kim Scalzo because she has all the info on tech. Um, so, um, sorry, a little, just a little aside there because there were some, so many questions. Um, um, sorry go ahead, to jump Amanda. in. Oh, so sorry. I, I um, <clears throat> Um, Amy, I use it for the same for ethics. This, this is my first semester, so I have ethics as well, and that's what we use it for. I do agree with you. I love the the spark. Uh, so it's just basically, I guess, the equivalent of a like on on social media, which um, another classmate can do. Um, they can send you a spark on on. Um, or the professor can. So it's really great when you get that because it's like, okay, they like what I had to say. Um, it's, it does give you more leeway or I do find that on um, the packback, we talk more like the discussions go on more than, than on the normal Blackboard um, discussion. But I don't know if that's just related to the class. Um, the thing that I don't like about it or that I find confusing is that the polls just kind of go one after the other. So on Blackboard, it's um, separated by module. So for example, like if we're on the first module, um, everybody's responding to that question. You are going back and forth, you're replying to each other um, and it's great. Whereas with Packback, it's, all in one. So he told us for um, our ethics professor to label like with the week number, that way we know what we're talking about. So that gets a little confusing. Um, you can't, so if I post something and then somebody responds to what I wrote, um, I've tried to like respond to that person and it doesn't allow it. You kind of have to respond to the original uh, person, which, you know, kind of, I feel like cuts it short if you want to open a discussion between a, a few classmates rather than just the original person who shared or their thoughts. Um, whereas with um, the discussion board on Blackboard, I feel you get a little bit of more, you can all communicate with, with one another and have that that type of discussion. Um, but other than that, in terms of usage, I feel it's very similar um, to Blackboard. Um, I just wish it would allow, like I said, for more of a group conversation rather than only responding to the original person. And I wish it was more um, sort of grouped by module rather than just one lengthy because right now we're kind of in between two, like some people like to go ahead. So, you know, I'm still answering for, for module four because that's due on Wednesday, but somebody's already done module five. And now, you know, you're, you've got like back and forth and back and forth. Um, and that's the confusing part about it. Okay, so that's great feedback for those instructional designers on there. At, uh are doing this it's really sorry important. for the extra work <laughs> no 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 it's very very important for them to hear uh amy you also talked about circle in and there's been some other questions in the chat about circle in which is another um third party product that we're using um for student supports and uh kind of a tutoring model um could you want to talk about that amy uh sure i haven't had a whole lot of experience with it because it hasn't been um necessary for any of my classes. It's been more of a, you know, hey, you should try this. And I just, I'm, I'm a fairly technologically savvy person. I can figure most things out. Um, I 
don't really care for the way circle in is set up. I found it confusing. It, it lags for me. Um, I'm, I'm just haven't quite figured out how that it can be like a successful part of my um, learning experience. For me, it just seemed to be something that was took a little bit more time and made things more confusing. So I don't know. I haven't had a real a, an experience with it yet to speak of. Sure. Anyone else at MCC um, have a different experience or um, I think it some professors really push on it, but um, some don't. So is there a different experience from the MCC students? No. Okay. It's, feel, it's still very much in a small pilot right now. So that might be um, as we're trying. But one of the things we're trying to solve is some of the questions you brought up with this, right? About um, accessibility and, you know, a lot of online learning, um, that we talk about, and I know I saw Bill Pels on here. He loves what I use the word eudagogy, um, but it's eudagogical, um, where we're kind of teaching each other a lot of stuff online. And in that particular case, um, and and I mean, I'm going to give you a break so you can get a glass of water or whatever you need to do because I want to ask Alex Pickett, um, who is also on our our chat here and does a lot with student supports. Um, she had some questions that I thought were really good. Um, before, and I think I want to kind of circle this around because we're getting to, God, we've already been here almost an hour and 15 minutes. Um, Alex, you had some questions you wanted to bring up and, and instead of trying to reiterate them, I'm gonna let them come from the horse's mouth here for that. You're on mute. Yeah, I'm here. I'm trying to find what my questions were, but you know, basically I am super, super interested in hearing more about what professors can do to make your learning more engaging or effective. And that could be in the design of the course, like how it's set up, or it could be in how the course is facilitated. So, you know, one of the things I think about are things, um, I try and think from the student's perspective, and I try and think about things like due dates and uh, for your assignments. I try to think about, um, um, you know, um, how discussions, we talked a little bit just now about discussions, but you know, the typical online course that uses Blackboard discussion will have, you know, post one response to the instructor's response and then two responses to your classmates' responses, something like that. And I'm just wondering what feedback you have for us who are professors or, or who support professors um, to help us understand from your perspe perspectives as adult students, adult working students with competing life priorities, what would help or what hinders your, um, your abilities to interact or engage or be successful, those kinds of things. We have a lot, with it. We have a lot of um, faculty and instructional designers on the call right now. And I would really like to tap into your, um, you know, your insights on that to help us understand camera policies, for example, or synchronous sessions um, that, you know, um, uh, best practices, things you've seen work and things you've seen don't work as well, stuff like that. Go ahead, Anissa. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Anissa. Well, I can add to, to cause I was just about to say, thank you for bringing up due dates. Um, what I do like, and Nicole, I am with you, color coding works. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, especially, you know, again, not just because it's like a work schedule, a school schedule, a kid's schedule. It's crazy. Um, what I have used a lot of, which is also color coded, is the calendar on Blackboard. Um, it's, you know, each of the, if you go on the calendar, um, the clot, like it will say like the assignments due for each class. But that's another thing that I realized not every professor does. So one of my classes is not on there. And this professor likes to, um, do the assignments like weekly. So my other classes, all the modules are submitted so you can do it at your own pace. This professor, you know, has it like weekly set up kind of like to go along with the syllabus. But because I work, I'm not always at home. I'm not always in front of my computer. 
I like to, you know, use my phone, go on Blackboard, see what assignments I have going on. So I don't always have the syllabus with me. And because this particular class is not on that calendar, I often have to like double check, triple check to make sure I'm not missing any assignments. So um, if this is something that, I don't know how easy it is on the professor's side to do that, but if this is something that maybe could be utilized where you can just go on that Blackboard calendar and have all of the classes with the assignments that each, each assignment is due. Um, and again, because it is color coded sort of by class, it is very helpful. Can I just oh, go ahead. Lila had something. Go ahead, Lila. Oh, well, I feel bad, Amy. Go ahead. I feel like it, I think you started first. Go ahead. No. Okay. No. Go ahead, Lila. All right. Um, I was gonna make a few points that um, uh, to Alexandra's question. Um, one of the things that's really frustrating for me, even though I've taken a few Blackboard courses in my undergrad program, like one per semester. Um, but doing it as a, as a grad student is very different because the type of assignments are different. So it's, it's still a huge learning curve um, going from undergrad to grad. Um, secondly, my, okay, so my main concern is one thing that really frustrates me, and it's my second semester, I took four classes last semester, I took four, I'm taking four now. What's frustrating is that every time you open up a new course um, and you're starting out the semester, the professors have organized the, the courses completely differently. That's really frustrating. Like you don't know which tab to use to find the course syllabus, to find the course schedule. It's like some people put it in the course information. Some people have it at start here. Some people have it somewhere there. And it's like, if everyone had it under course information, everyone knows you can find the course syllabus and the course schedule in course information. But everyone has it their, their classroom design completely differently. So that's a little frustrating um, in my opinion. I just wish it was the same. Um, number two, I wish that there was more videos, like I mentioned earlier, and PowerPoints. I love the PowerPoints. I love when pro professors use PowerPoints to highlight the main points. I think Arnisa was talking about that earlier, that like, you know, there's so much information um, that you have to go over on your own, you know, covering a chapter. And then professors only want to use like specific information for tests or quizzes or homework assignments. So if professors can actually just, you know, use the chapter uh, the textbook chapter PowerPoints, which highlights the main points for us to review after we review the chapter, that really helps us to understand, okay, this is the information, the key information that we should be focusing on. So PowerPoints, I think, are really helpful. I wish all my professors use those chapter textbook um, PowerPoints. Um, another thing I want to mention is that I, I had two classes last semester where professors had short weekly assignments. So it took me about two, three hours to do homework for a particular class every week. And that was good for me. I liked that. I liked having short weekly assignments versus my two other classes, which they were once a month, you know, five, five page papers and, and big projects. And that was, it was really hard and it was tough and it was challenging and it was so much stress and so much anxiety to deal with like a big project once or twice a month versus short weekly assignments were so stress-free, you know, no anxiety involved, no overwhelm. So um, that's really important. And I, I think for professors, if I can just say anything, I would love to tell them, professors, we have so much going on with in our adult life, with, with um, personal responsibilities, with work responsibilities, with our personal professional goals. We're no longer high school students that we don't have other responsibilities. I wish professors can understand we have other classes, we have other um, professional goals and personal lives. And I, I think sometimes some of the professors, they give us like so much work and it's like, it gets very overwhelming and especially to, to self learn. It's very overwhelming. And I feel like when you're in class, it's so easy to connect with other students, ask them, you know, how are you, how are you doing in the homework? Or, you know, you can ask for help and advice and whatever, like, you know, how to go about the homework if you're, if you're struggling. But in, a, in an online class, you really don't have that same support from, from a classmate. It's, 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 it's very intimidating as a student to go to your course messages and message another classmate and be like, are you struggling too? Can I have like, you know, what can, can you help me? Or, you know, it's, 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 it's overwhelming to even think to, to reach out to another student because I don't know, it's, you, there's no, there's no personal connection there to do that. You don't know who to ask. Wow, Lila, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but great. Heidi, you had something, right? I do. I have a couple things. Um, for me, Alexander, you asked about, um, I think that your original question was about professor's involvement. Right. Um, and so for me, it's a couple things. Discussion boards are incredibly helpful. Um, I like them best when the professor 
engages in that conversation a little bit um, so that we know that they're reading it too and we know if we're on track or not. Um, the feedback that they often send with the grade can be very helpful, but not if it's like, you answered, <laughs> you know, you wrote 200 words and you answered. <laughs> like that's that's just not, uh, okay, I know I did, thanks. Um, but then the other piece to that is if, um, if they're responding in a timely matter. So I've had a couple of professors who don't do those discussion board responses until we're on like two or three models later. And for me, I'm not just going through the movements here. Like I really wanna make sure I'm understanding this and I really wanna know that I have a, a grasp on this material because this matters so much to me. So I wanna hear timely feedback. Um, Along with that, the other piece, and I know there's some reason for it, but having mandatory um, number of words, sometimes you're just putting in filler words, you know, um, and that's not like, uh, like, I don't want to worry about being deducted because I hit 45 words instead of 50 words. Um, so that's a little piece that I think sometimes should be thought about. Um, and then there was another one, but I lost it. So I'll be quiet. <laughs> Thanks, Heidi. Amy, what do you have in there? Are you next? Yes. Um, so I I just I think that it's really helpful when when professors are actively involved. Um, I like the videos. I have a um my um, statistics professor right now does videos that where she's you actually get to see her face and and she's got little anecdotes that you know make me giggle while I'm doing my work and and she's very involved and and it it just makes it a an easier process um one thing that I like that she does is um there was a section where she thought it might get confusing when we're learning to use a new lab um like mini tab lab and combining that with our my stat lab. And so she actually did a video, you know, screen or sharing her screen um, so that we could see how we would combine those two things together. And that's something for me who, you know, haven't, I haven't used these resources before. I found that very helpful to see these videos of the screen itself and, you know, showing how you'd actually take those steps to combine it. Um, I love the, um, I love having course schedules, everything. I print them out immediately. That's the first thing I do. As soon as I get into my course, I print out the course schedule and I put everything into my paper planner so that it's all in one place in front of me. Um, one thing that, you know, I did have an issue with one professor uh, where the work was kind of um, unsteady from one week to the next. I think it would have been helpful if you have a a particularly heavy week or you're expecting something really unusual to maybe give a heads up, you know, like, oh, hey, you're going to need to purchase this book, you know, or you're instead of having an article to read this week, you're going to have a whole book to read, you know, heads up, you're Mike and you might need a little extra time for that. Um, but yeah, I, I also the other thing I sorry, I had all these thoughts while I'm listening to everybody um, was that there are some professors that have like the uh, detailed assignment, um, like explanations of assignments. Um, so if I'm doing a new um, paper, kind of paper that I've never done for ethics before, and it's just a quick blurb of what I've got to do, and I don't know what he's expecting, I can go to the assignments and it'll give me a detailed description of what exactly he's looking for in those assignments. So for the professors who maybe don't have the time to be doing all the videos and stuff, it's just really nice to have little areas to go where you can get more um, detail. Mark, you want to jump in? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mark, really fast. Um, Amy, those videos from the stats course came because of student feedback. Because a student said, I'm struggling with these concepts. Is there, is there something we could do? Um, and I'm so, so, so happy. And I will definitely share back to the campus that it is working, that it worked when she did it the first semester and it's still working now. Um, so all the things that you're saying is so fabulous because it really goes right in and is immediately Im impacting your work and all SUNY online students. Sorry, Mark. 
go for it. No, 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 don't apologize, please. Um, I think for me, uh, something that's really been working well that my ethics professor has done was in the beginning of the semester um, in our preview week, he sent out like an intake form where each student had to fill out. And there was a series of questions that asked us how we all preferred our feedback and how we liked to be kind of instructed um, because, you know, not everybody learns the same way and not everybody's mind you know, kind of processes everything similarly. So for for this professor, he, you know, took into account exactly how certain people like to be coached and managed and instructed. So um, for me, like part of my feedback was like, even if I get a hundred on an assignment, like I want to know what I could have done to to be better because there's always that something that I can do better, right? So that's been super helpful to me. And the feedback that he's given me has like really kind of allowed me to take my um, my work to the next level that I'm, you know, and just preparing me for kind of like, you know, future classes, right? Um, so that was super helpful for me. Another thing that I, I really liked is that some professors kind of open up their modules like for the entire course, um, you know, from day one. Cause so I can like, you know, spend my time uh, like if I have downtime, I can get ahead in a certain class if I know that another class has like a heavier assignment so that I can kind of manage my expectations and really kind of manage my own calendar because uh, right we're you know we have competing priorities as adult you know learners. Um, so for the classes that you know the modules are open weeks ahead of time, I try to get myself ahead, you know, um, so that really helps me out there. And then um, just something to like answer uh, one of Maureen's questions with connecting with classmates. Um, I think something that um, Amanda and the and Kim and the success coaches sent out a survey like a week or two ago asking us like, you know, if we're interested in connecting with other students. That for me is something that like I'm absolutely interested in and, and missing because like a lot of people ask me, they're like, oh, so, how, you know, you get to meet other people and, you know, do this and that. and my response is like, uh, you know, discussion forums, like they're great for what they are, but they don't really facilitate connection and they don't help us engage with one another. So um, just, you know, for Maureen, I think that's something that, um, you know, Kim, Amanda and everybody else are working on. Awesome, thank you, Mark. Um, Amanda, first off, thank you so much um, for facilitating with me today. Um, I wanted to I wanted to let Amanda do it because she's so much more personality than I do, um, <laughs> and knows what she's doing, and 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 so, folks, the 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 deal here is that this is recorded, right? Um, there was so much content here in this video um, that there is uh, the opportunity to go back and and look at it. Also, the um, the 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 chat, my gosh, it is so rich in information. Um, of all the chats of, 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 of when I've facilitated, this has been one of the best because we have so many people participating. Um, the, the, I hope we answered the question and now you know why we do what we do on the student uh, coaching side. Um, these people are just fantastic and they're here to change their lives, uh, change their own lives. Um, and we want to do everything we can to support those changes um, and, and, and move them forward in what their goals are. So um, as we, uh, as we build our new courses, as we teach our and facilitate our courses, um, keep these ideas in mind. Um, the uh, uh, students are, are, are why we do what we do, bottom line. So um, thank you all individually and collectively. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the chats are going crazy all over the place on my, on my little iPad here. Um, um, but, uh, you know, look back uh, and, and reflect. Um, again, thank you all um, at every level. I wish you all the best of luck as you move forward in your endeavors. Um, and, uh, you know, know that there is this group of people, you know, the, the hundred or so people that have been sitting here watching you that are all cheering for you as well. Um, we have a great team at SUNY. We have a fantastic group of people that are wholly dedicated to your success. Um, and um, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you all. And if you need us, let us know. And you're not invisible. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.